I'm Tori, and today I'm going to be discussing Something Nasty in the Woodshed by Kyrille Bonfiglioli. This is the second book in the Charlie Mordecai series. It was published in 1976, and I listened to the audiobook narrated by Simon Preble, who is one of my favorite audiobook narrators. So the first book in this series was pretty weird, and it just keeps getting stranger the more I read. These books are so dry and satirical. They're very dark and very funny and completely bizarre. I have a review posted for the first book, which was called Don't Point That Thing at Me, so if you want to know a little bit more about what this series is about, go watch that video. I'm going to start talking about this very strange book now, so if you think you might want to read it, go do that, then come back to hear my opinions. Alright, so the first strange thing about this book is that it is the second one in the series. It's definitely the sequel to Don't Point That Thing at Me, yet somehow the events at the end of the last book didn't actually happen. If I'm remembering the ending of the last book correctly, Mordecai had an affair with the wife of a Texas rancher, who then died leaving the wife single, I guess. But Mordecai and his bodyguard Jacques had to go on the run. Jacques drowned in a swamp and Charlie saw it happen and knew he was dead. Then Charlie was cornered by the police, was recording his final notes, and was getting ready to go out and die, hopefully taking the police who were planning to shoot him down with him. This book picks up with absolutely no mention of that. Now, instead of living in England, Charlie is living in the Isle of Jersey, and that could kind of make sense if somehow he managed to escape the police. Maybe he's on the run and in hiding, though he is still using his real name, so he's not trying very hard to hide. Jacques is alive, and Charlie is now married to the woman he met in the last book. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if Jacques didn't really die. We know that Charlie is not a reliable narrator, so maybe when he thought he was going to die, he was being melodramatic and giving his story some extra flair, and everyone just got separated and he made it sound more dramatic than it really was. Maybe he was confused and thought that Jacques was dead, but it turned out he wasn't and somehow they both managed to survive. Or maybe this is just one of those situations where the author decided it doesn't matter if the books actually make sense in chronological order, and somehow they take place in parallel universes where most of the characters died in the last book, but they're still alive in this book. I have no idea what's going on. But that is still not the strangest thing about this book. This whole series is so dry and satirical, it's really hard to figure out what things the author is supporting and what things he is mocking. And it's fairly common to have stories where the author clearly disagrees with the narrator. You have a main character who is saying things that the author clearly doesn't support, but he's telling the story from this other character's perspective. In this story, I don't think the main character even agrees with most of the things he says. Charlie Mordecai is clearly telling this story to entertain and to get a reaction, and he lets you know that he's editing heavily and that this isn't necessarily exactly what happened, and he'll make comments that are very sexist and racist and homophobic and generally horrible, and he makes them in such a way that you don't think that he quite agrees with them and that the author doesn't agree with them, and so these books contain lots of things that are very problematic. The story doesn't treat women well at all, it's very sexist, and it's hard to tell if the author is sexist and the work is coming out that way, or if the whole thing is a satire and you're supposed to realize this is ridiculous and it's actually speaking out against sexism. And Charlie's romantic relationships are very interesting. In the last book, he talked a lot about all the different women he's dated, and in this book he kind of mentions liking to date a lot too. He loves sleeping with women and kind of being a playboy and taking advantage of them. But then when we see him, he's very often the one who's less interested in sex, and his wife is much more interested in it than he is. And one of the funniest moments in the book was when the author actually wrote himself into it. Charlie was catching up with an old professor and reminiscing about the good old days when he was back in school, and the professor made some comment saying that he thought Charlie was gay, and Charlie said, oh no, that was my friend, Bonfiglioli. And it was just so great that the author actually made himself an acquaintance of Charlie's. It was amazing! And that scene kind of makes me more okay with some of the homophobic things that Charlie was saying because it gave me the impression that we're just supposed to laugh at that and notice how ridiculous it is to have those opinions and say those things. 
And I kind of felt that way about the other problematic elements in the story, too. This book focused on the very light and non-controversial topics of sexual assault and devil worship, so it was very interesting to kind of pick through the satire. At the beginning of the story, I felt like this book's age was showing a lot, and that you would never get something this sexist and misogynistic and dismissive of sexual assault published now. And I was very bothered by the fact that this book was being so dismissive of the female characters and treating this series of brutal rapes like kind of a joke. Charlie is concerned about these sexual assaults, but he also thinks that the women are being melodramatic and overreacting to what happened to them, and he's clearly enjoying this whole vigilante justice forming a posse thing and going out with his friends to tramp through the wilderness and hunt of rapists. And he has a great time researching the satanic rituals that he thinks are happening and playing the guessing game of which woman will be attacked next. And his whole attitude is so cavalier and dismissive and belittling. And for most of the book, I felt like that was the attitude of the author, too. But then, by the end of the story, Charlie learns that he was wrong. He was looking at this whole thing as kind of a fun chance for him to play detective. But then he finds out that his friends are the ones responsible for this, and that everything he thought he was doing to help has actually just kind of made the situation worse and all the research he was doing into the satanic cults actually just gave the rapist more ideas of how not to get caught. And then Charlie and his wife were both attacked, and he realized that this wasn't a game, that it was deadly serious, and that he shouldn't be treating it so lightly. And I still think that his wife's character was underdeveloped. I don't even remember what her name was. And when she was attacked, it felt like it was more about what that did to Charlie than what it did for her, and we didn't spend any time thinking about her feelings or how she would react to this. So I don't think that the book is completely absolved from all charges of sexism. But it also isn't nearly as bad as I thought it was, because the whole point of the story was for Charlie to learn that assault isn't a game, and that vigilante justice tends to make things worse and not better. But it's hard to tell if that's actually what the author intended when he wrote this story. It could just be my interpretation of it. These books are so dry and so sarcastic that you can read a lot of different things into them, and it's hard to tell where the sarcasm ends and where the author's opinions begin. So I still don't quite know what to think of this series. Charlie Mordecai is an incredibly likable character, and I still can't figure out if he's a terrible person or a good person who just says lots of bad things sarcastically. This book got very strange, and I'm interested and a little nervous to see what happens next in this series. <laughs>